Hi, my name is Mr. Anderson, and I am mean to people on the internet. Um, I'm always very polite about it, though. I just tend to ask difficult questions and insist on the answers. The reason I do that is because I like to combat pseudoscience, and I want people to have some of the techniques that we use in the legal world uh, to combat people who are trying to be deliberately evasive and force them to um, face the truth. Um, one of the things that people run into uh, and that is difficult for scientists um, and anybody who's debating uh, somebody who's doing pseudoscience uh, is this concept of presuppositions where uh, the person who's being asked questions is going to try and drag the conversation into discussions of philosophy um, and I find probably the best way to combat that is to tackle the question early and get those things out of the way uh, and so you'll see that that's what I did here with Dr. Kent Hovind um, and I even sort of tried to uh, formalize it and nail it down into what I'm calling the October 13th protocol, which was just the debate's date, um, so that people can reuse that in the future, whether they're debating Dr. Hovind or somebody else. So this is the October 13th protocol in its long form. I hope you enjoy it. Let's start with some presupposition stuff. And so these are the easy questions. The tricky ones are going to come later. So number one, you believe you exist, right? Yes. And you believe in God. You're correct. And you believe that God is a loving God that wants the best for his creation. Yeah, yes, but we need to be cautious what our interpretation of loving is. Or my dad loved me enough to spank me sometimes and hurt me. Sometimes God the Father has to get rough. But at least, yes, I believe he loves yeah. But he's also a fair judge. Okay. You also believe that God is honest and that he would not lie to you or try and trick you, right? Um, I think like in warfare, wearing camouflage is a, is a legitimate form of basically lying to your enemy. I know I'm not here. So I, I'd, I'd be cautious. I'd have to see that question, I guess, sharpened up a little bit. But uh, God certainly deceived people that needed it uh, at, at times. But uh, anyway, God cannot lie, according to the Bible. That's what it says. God cannot lie. Go ahead. Right. So um, God does not lie in that he doesn't try and mislead people about the way that the world works. Is that fair? To my knowledge, I've never seen him do that. Right. Okay, and you believe that he does not do that, right? I, I believe God does not mislead anybody. Great. Um, and for that reason, you believe that you can trust your senses, right? No, not always. We can't always trust our senses. They can be fooled many different ways. Any magician can tell you that. But uh, mm -hmm. trust my senses or trust, I trust his word. Mm -hmm. And my senses most of the time. All right. Well, let me ask you a more direct question. You believe that what you can see and what you can hear and what you can touch are real, right? Yeah, hallucinations okay. and stuff like that, but generally, yes. Okay. And you believe I am real? Okay. And you believe I am real? Do I believe you're real? <laughs> as far as I know, I just see a digital representation on a screen here, but I'm assuming that's a real you, yes. Okay. So unless you have some kind of a reason to believe otherwise, so for example... Uh, if you, you think that there might be, you might have taken some substances or you might be uh, undergoing some kind of a psychotic episode, except for situations like that, you think that what you see and hear and touch are real. Is that fair? That, that's generally correct. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Are there any other exceptions that you want to discuss or can we just say that that's correct? Well, I don't see how that any, has anything to do with the debate, but uh, yes, as far as I know, I, I trust pretty much what I see, feel and hear. Okay. And you believe that God gave you a mind with which to reason, right? I believe that God gave you a mind with which to reason, right? Yes. Okay. And you believe that he did that so that you could make sense of the world around you, right? I'm not sure why he did it. That's probably one of the reasons, certainly. Uh -huh. Okay. So now I'm just going to talk about some things that we're going to grant each other. Now, we um, talked about this already over email Um but I'm just going to kind of rattle this off, and then I'm going to ask you to agree. Uh, none of this should be a surprise. Um, and so what I said was that I'm going to grant you the existence of God for the purposes of this debate with a couple of restrictions. We will agree that he created the universe and that he created life. If you want God to be able to tinker, that is, do miracles along the way, then here are my restrictions. Miracles happen every day, but God plays by his own rules. In general, he acts on the world in accordance with its physical laws in such a way that you can't even tell he did it. That is to say, just because it's a miracle doesn't mean that it doesn't have a naturalistic explanation. And 
just because it happens to have a naturalistic explanation, that doesn't mean that there's no God in it. That science does not steal his glory. He used the science to achieve his ends. Were he to do otherwise, were he to violate the laws of physics or directly and supernaturally affect the world, it would be pretty obvious. It's gonna leave a trace like it did in the resurrection. There's no debate amongst Christians that God did that. We agree on all of that, right, sir? Well, I'd be a little cautious answering that. Uh, God, God created the laws. He's not bound by his laws. He can walk on water if he wants. I don't think that would leave a trace anywhere other than testimonials of people who've seen it. Um, well, that would be a trace, sir. That would be a trace, sir. Okay, they left a trace. People saw it and testified, yeah. yes, we saw him do that. Um, yeah, so there'd be, the, there's, there's some evidence, right? Well, yeah, um, all of history. I, mean, all of history. We, I, I don't know that Abe Lincoln was president. I didn't see it. I take take somebody's word for it, you know. So it, it, anything outside of my observation, I'd have to say is, you know, the different kinds of evidence. You know that you're a lawyer. Some right. are stronger than others, right? Right. So there will be evidence of these different miracles, and, and we can weigh that evidence um, as we go. <clears throat> is that all fair? Well, I'm not sure what how you could get evidence of something happening, like raising the dead, uh, other than a testimonial. Uh, well, there that, will be testimonials. That evidence, but, Sorry, anyway, go ahead. Yes, God, God is not bound by his laws. We are. I'm stuck in gravity. He's not. I'm stuck in time. He's not. He can go back and forward. He's not. This is not 2023 in heaven. He's, he's right now in all time. He's standing at your funeral right now. Go ahead. Right. So we agree, though, that in the event that you want to talk about God uh, supernaturally affecting the world, that you're going to provide me with some evidence that he did that. Is that fair? If I can, if there's evidence available and I know about it, I will certainly share it. All right. I think we've made progress already. Um, so in future debates, uh, I'm going to refer to this set of assumptions as the October 13th protocol. If I use that terminology, you'll understand what I mean. Okay. Okay. And you're not going to try and change or go back on me now, are you? I don't know. I mean, you may have tricked me into something like lawyers like to do and saying something. I may that have, I, sir. Yeah. Well, okay. but but let's well let's sort of let's sort of nail it down then so that you understand what it is you're agreeing to because I'm not yet at least trying to trick you. Okay. Um. That's why Jesus said, "Woe unto you lawyers!" You know. But go ahead. Well, I mean, you know, hopefully Jesus will forgive me when, uh, you know, when I when I reach the pearly gates, right? But uh, I just do my best. So. Just so you understand what it is you're getting yourself into, if we build on the assumptions that we just talked about, um, if a miracle does happen that violates the laws of physics, it's going to leave a trace. We already agreed on that. And we oh, would no, no, more... I, didn't, I, didn't say, I didn't say I agreed to that one. If, okay, you, if don't agree, miracle... you don't agree that miracles leave traces. If a miracle happened, it's only to leave a trace is what you said. Sometimes just to show his glory. It doesn't have to leave a trace. He created the world. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know. Sometimes it may just be to show his glory, his power. Uh, the right. miracles in Egypt, okay? The, the turning mm -hmm. the water to blood. But, so I'm a little cautious saying I agree 100% to that, but uh, go ahead and twist it how you want. Go ahead. Right. So, I, and again, the only reason that I'm kind of belaboring this is because I want to make sure that we do agree on these things. So if a miracle <laughs> happens that violates the laws of physics, then my, uh, then, then it is going to leave a trace because, and we are more likely than not to notice that trace because God does not try to trick us. Is that fair? I'd have to think on that one for a while before I answer. Uh, well, go ahead. And I, think, time. I, don't see how, I don't see how this is anywhere near the topic of asking about, you know, where's the evidence of an animal producing other than its kind? You're supposed mm -hmm. to provide some evidence for that. I haven't seen that yet. Mm -hmm. No, take your time. Think about it. Um. Phrase the question one more time. Sure. So if a miracle does happen that violates the laws of physics, it's going to leave a trace, and we would be more likely than not to notice that trace because God does not try and trick us, right? Well, if it left a trace like Jesus walking on water, uh, he might have walked on water when nobody was watching. He, he could have had done a miracle then. Uh, he probably mm -hmm. prayed to the Father. So no, I'm not going to say everybody knows. It doesn't always leave a trace. I won't agree to that. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, it does, but that's a little too much of a uh, nebulous question. No, that's fair. 
can we at least say that in the event that there is no evidence of a miracle, it is less likely that whatever happened happened by supernatural means? We would have no way of knowing with a miracle. Um, I, don't, I don't see any way we would possibly know that. Uh, that's where it gets into faith. I have faith in a lot of things, and I'm not asking my faith to be taught. Mm. I think it's a see, miracle for an amoeba to turn to a whale. Now, that's a miracle. I don't think that's, it doesn't leave a trace. Right. Well, sir, the reason that I'm asking you this is because, I mean, as we go on, if I corner you, I don't want you starting to invent miracles and especially not miracles that leave no trace um, to try and get out of it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you can have yeah. miracles in your responses. They just can't be invisible miracles that have no evidence to support them. You okay. what I mean? And vice versa. I think, where's the evidence? So here they have an amoeba turning to a human. Uh, I want to see the evidence for that. I say there's that's none. That's great, sir. That's great, sir. Now, do you agree to my? Uh, do you agree to what I've just said? No invisible as far, miracles. As far as I understand it, yes, I do. Okay. All right. So we'll add that to the October thirteenth protocol. Is that fair? Okay. Okay. Now here's the uh, uh, the last thing I want to talk about with regards to presuppositions. You believe that the world around you makes sense and behaves consistently, right? Generally, we have weather patterns that are not, you know, go crazy and think, you know, earthquakes and things we have no control over and don't, can't even predict. So as generally, yes, it predicts, I think it generally follows the laws of gravity and physics. Uh, uh, correct. Go ahead. Hmm. And you believe the sun's going to come up tomorrow, right? I mean, philosophers well, say that we can't prove that logically, but we assume actually, it, no. we believe it. Technically, right? the sun doesn't come up. We turn and we it comes into our vision. So, okay, yes. I think the earth is turning and this, the sun's going to come into our vision tomorrow morning about 625 in my latitude. Right. Okay. And that is something that we presume, right? Without evidence. We have that shared presumption, right? Right. We've got thousands of years of observation of this happening. Right. Right. We all, we, we agree that in general, the past resembles the future. The way things are working right now is the way they're going to work in the future and is the way that they're going to work in the past. Unless of course, there's a miracle. And if that happens, then um, you can do that, but you just have to tell me how things were different and why they worked that way. Fair? Well, it may not be a miracle. There was uh, all of a sudden all the buildings in Hiroshima fell down, and that was not a miracle. That was an atomic bomb. Uh, it was man doing that. So they, they, they were used to getting up every morning and seeing their window in, their, in place. And now all of a sudden everything's gone. So, again, I think the question is a little nebulous, but I'll, I'll give you a qualified yes. Go ahead. Well, sir, I, I'd like a hard yes. Um, and I, I'd, I'd put it to you that, uh, that the bomb in Hiroshima, although it may have been unexpected from the perspective of the residents there, was not something that was unexpected by science, right? The, the laws of physics applying in that situation were the same as the ones today, right? Right. Okay. So you agree with me that the laws of physics apply the same now as they do in the future and the same as they do in the past, subject to our discussion with respect to miracles, right? Right. God's able to, he's not bound by them. We are bound by those laws. Yes. Right. And if God is going to intercede, he's going to do so subject to the rules we've just discussed. Right. If God's going to intercede and go beyond those laws of physics, he's going to leave a trace or leave a test. Is that yeah, what you're saying? It's going to leave, it's going to leave a trace. You're going to be able to show me that trace or you'll have the, you'll, you'll be providing you with some evidence of that trace. Right. Well, I don't think I have to. Again, they're trying to shift the burden of proof to me. This is my religious belief that Jesus can perform miracles and raise the dead and can take me to heaven when I die. But I don't have to prove that to anybody. I don't, I don't understand. Well, sir, the thing is that this is a debate where we are going to be discussing uh, a number of things. And I have, I've got no problem with you um, invoking miracles. But what I do have a problem with, as I said before, is you invoking miracles that... Um, you have no evidence for and if the in the event that you want to invoke a miracle then there needs to be some kind of a justification i thought we had agreed on that well i, I would say the same burden of proof uh, same same burden is on the evolutionist to provide the evidence where is the new information to turn an amoeba into a whale amoebas don't have fins or flippers or lungs where there's yeah. a lot of new information they're calling on a miracle time to do it and the burden of proof is on you guys to prove your, your religion of evolution not on me. No, I understand. I, I have a very, I have a very heavy burden um, that I'm going to have to meet. I, I agree with you there, um, and I'm going to try and meet that. 
I okay. just I want to make sure that we're clear on when and how miracles come into play. Are we clear on how miracles come into play? You're probably clear in your mind, and I'm clear in my mind. Now, whether we're thinking the same thing or not, I don't know. But yes, I, I believe God can do miracles, and they may or may not leave a trace. They generally do. And uh, go ahead. Okay. Well, let's make sure that we're both on the same page. So just to recap, the October 13th protocol assumptions are as follows. You're real. I am real. God's real. He loves us. He doesn't lie to us. We can trust our senses. God created the universe and created life. He usually works through natural processes. Supernatural interventions leave a trace. And where you want to invoke a miracle, you have to justify it with some evidence. And the Bible can count as evidence, though it might not be definitive. Where there is no trace of a miracle, then it's less likely that such a miracle occurred. Lastly, things work the same way in the past as they do now, unless you want to point to a reason why that isn't so. You agree with those premises? Well, I, you went by kind of fast. There's several I've already discussed. I said, I'm not sure we can always trust our senses. Any magician can tell you that, you know, sleight of hand and uh, people get the me medical problems or physical problems. So again, okay. the same, same so caveat. Let's, let's, make that, let's, let's make that caveat. I'll, I'll give you that caveat subject to the possibility that you're being fooled by a magician or something. Is that we'll include that in the protocol? You agree with that? Thing? Yeah, people get fooled, you know, people get dizzy getting off a of merry-go-round and their, you know, senses right. are they're not standing up straight when they are. So Okay. Anyway, so subject anyway. to that as well then. Subject okay. to things like <clears throat> subject to things like that, where there's a problem with your body or there's a problem with somebody deliberately fooling you like a magician. Subject to those that, are, we can trust the senses. Those are the right? two exceptions I can think of right off the bat. If I, if I knew the debate was on this topic, I could have come up with more, but go ahead. All right. Well, if you come up with more specific ones, then we can we can talk about those. But subject to those for now, you're comfortable with that set of assumptions, right? I'm comfortable to, to the point I understand it. Yes, sir. And you're comfortable agreeing to it? Again, as far as I understand it, yes. Great. Amazing. Well, I'm sure that's going to help uh, a lot, not just in these debates, but in lots of your debates. So now.